Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036 0703 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. This morning, we will now go a little further to begin to look at what someone, the pursuit, the, in, the essential pursuit of a man God wants to use for leadership. You know, when we started, we said, God said, I have found a man after my own heart. Isn't it? And we saw that the critical place was the secret place. And that if a man will continuously be relevant in what God wants to do, he has to give attention to the secret place. The secret aspect of his own life. We are going to be looking this morning at the the focus that the a leader, someone who is preparing, whom God is preparing for leadership, must constantly maintain and pursue in order to keep yourself relevant in what God wants to do with you. In order to keep yourself ever relevant in the purpose of God. You know, we were saying that as soon as activities increase, the first place that you are likely to ignore and abandon is your secret place. Isn't it? We saw that that is always the peril that has faced leaders. They become more concerned about how to present themselves, how to be on the platform, how to be on the pulpit, rather than how to be in the private, secret place where God uh, walks with men and where God raises them. So this morning, I would like us now to, to take few issues that must be your primary pursuit. The primary pursuit of a man who wants to continue to grow in leadership. I call it primary. Primary. And the Lord Jesus himself did not hide it. And I want us to study and discuss a bit of it in the short space that we have. Now, it was in the house of Mary, uh, a matter of Bethany, that this matter actually broke forth more clearly. Even though it has been a recurrent, continuous issue, in the lives of those that God ever used. But now, it was given a clear expression in the story of Martha and Mary. And though you may have known it, I still feel in preparing you for exploits, in preparing you for a right kind of leadership, in preparing you for an effective leadership both on campus and in life generally. This must not be an overemphasis. It has to be something 
that you have to carry and carry all the time. Not for two years, but for as long as you hope to be relevant in the purpose of God. So, let's turn to the book of Luke, chapter 10. Luke 10. Luke 10. The all that we want to talk about will be from verse 38, verse 39, 40, 41, and 42. That's all we want to look at within the short space of time that remains for us this morning. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about what? Much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing. How many things? But one thing. Is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part. Which shall not. Be taken away. From her. Now that's the short story. But you know, in that short story, the Lord had released a very crucial issue that will turn your life around if you know how to address it, if you know how to pick it. And checking. The future that God is laying before your lives. It was important to equip you with that before you go. It is important that we speak into that. So that you can get to where leadership are. I mean a leader is constantly resourced. Renewed, refreshed, rekindled and resharpened. Why not try to tell all about Martha and all about Mary? Because we don't have the time. There are a few things that has come up as we look at that passage. First, I want you to note that it is possible to have the great privilege of being in the environment of Christ. And having the correct exposure to Christ. And having the opportunity of even interpersonal contact with the Lord. It is possible. Like Martha was having. Because the Bible says... That Jesus entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. For me, not everybody in those days had the privilege of having Jesus come under their roof. Am I right? Not everyone, not even every rich man who has plenty of houses had that opportunity for Jesus to come to their house. 
But I found that Jesus normally goes to Bethany and he normally visits this particular house where Mary and Martha is. But you know there was a problem that I really wish God will help us to identify quickly, particularly as you are getting into leadership. It was that Martha unconsciously took Jesus' presence in her house for granted. Eh? Martha thought of Jesus' presence in her house as a normal thing. So she did not know how to maximize that presence. She did not know how to engage that presence for something eternal. She missed out on that which could have been a very, very crucial issue for her growth and for her future ministry. Because severally, if you go to other passages now, you will see that Jesus had visited that place several times. Am I right? You remember that six days to the Passover, before, six days to the time that Jesus was going to be crucified, he visited that house. Hmm? When Lazarus, their brother, was sick, they were so close to Jesus that they could send a message and say, Come, oh, your friend whom thou lovest is sick. Come. Eh? They have that connection and that relationship. But for Martha, nothing seemed to come out of it. And I want you to see why. And this matter, I pray that it will settle in your own heart uh, as you are preparing to become a vessel that God can use for a long time, even among your colleagues, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at what the Bible said. We are told that she had a sister called Mary. So definitely, from the way the Bible is putting it, Martha was the leader. Eh? Did this show forth in that passage? Let's, let's look at it again. A certain woman named Martha received him into her house. What does that show you? Who is the house owner? Aha. And then they say, she also had a sister called Mary. What does that imply to you? Eh? That Mary must have been a younger sister. Have you seen that now? Okay. And for you to confirm that also, you will notice that the way Martha came to speak to Jesus, say, don't you care that this girl, what again does that prove? that the girl must be a younger sister and that she is actually the leader. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Okay. Now, that is one of the key issues that I don't want you to miss. It is something that happens to leaders that usually they never think it is wrong. They never think it is a mistake because leadership uh, imposes a kind of responsibility on a man that makes him to forget priorities of life. Leadership activities many, many times draws you 
draws you out and out and out until the real priority of life becomes lost in your mind and in your consideration. And because of that, we may have so many leaders whose only power of leadership is on the external activities that they are running. They don't have something else that can compel them to be effective in what they are doing. So, that's why I'm first looking at the mother as a leader. So, we want to first skip verse 39 so that we can trace issues about Martha a bit and then return to where we are. But Martha was what? Let's read it. Verse 40. Who reads that for me? Martha was the jittery type. What version are you reading? She was the jittery type. And she was what? Worried about the big dinner she was setting up. Any other version that we want to help us read? Martha, look at this one. Let's read it from this sister here. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me uh-huh. to serve alone? So. Therefore, tell her to help me. Uh-huh. And Jesus answered, It's all right, you have already moved from where we are going. Now, what did they say about Martha? She was distracted. Hmm. She was distracted. The old King James said, Martha was cumbered about what? About much serving. Let's first answer a question. Was he serving the devil? Who was she trying to serve? She was trying to serve Jesus and serve the disciples and serve all the brethren that came. So, can you see a leader Who feels he has the responsibility of doing what? Of serving the Lord, serving the brethren, serving the disciples, serving everybody that came around. And yet, the way the Bible described Martha was that she was what? Distracted about much serving. Whereas, in the past few days, we have been dealing with Things that could distract you, a uh, personal sin, secret sin, a uh, lack of integrity, and all the things that we have been talking about. But now, this morning, I'm dealing with something else. Something that does not first appear sinful to you. Something that looks legitimate. Something that you can easily express. Ah! Is that not why we are there? We're the leaders. We need to do something. It doesn't appear evil. It appears nice. In fact, it appears the main reason why you should keep doing that. So, Martha, the first word they said was, she was distracted. So, let me note with you now. If your leadership and your serving and your activities does not give you space to concentrate on knowing Jesus, then that leadership, that position, that uh, ESCO office that you have taken, is what? It's a distraction. It's not only a distraction for the time being, it's a distraction for your future life. If you became so encumbered with everything to the point that you cannot 
make that choice of one thing that is needful, then you are unnecessarily encumbered and you are completely distracted. And when you get distracted now, I want to inform you, you will not only be distracted by yourself, you will become a distraction to what God wants to do. There are so many people that I see them going up and down as if they are in the ministry, but they are a distraction to the purpose of God. Just a distraction. There are certain practices that I can see several young people, several uh, young pastors have carried and they are practicing it. And I say, if this one had ever spent time with God, will he not have known that God does not approve this? If this one has known how to sit at the feet of Jesus, will he not have known that God does not do things like this? When you get distracted from learning Jesus, not only will you be distracted by your life, you will become what? A distraction to people and to what God wants to do. And why should you be in leadership only to distract others? Now, can you see the distraction? The Bible says she had a sister called Mary who did what? Who sat where? At Jesus' feet and did what? Now, so look at look at this. It's like Jesus is doing what I'm doing here. He's teaching. And all of you are seated here. And Mary was one of those that sat at Jesus' feet hearing his word. Are you getting me? Now, and why Jesus was teaching? I could imagine how matter fusing up and down and he stood there behind. What was she trying to do? She was trying to call Mary. You know, but Mary was totally captured, captivated by who? By the personality of Jesus and by his word that he was hearing. All sign language that matter a distracted woman was making to distract this girl. She simply did not see it. She just focused. You notice how Mary did. And was capturing every word from the mouth of the Lord. You know what that Mary is planning for? Even though Mary was not the leader at the time. Are you hearing me? She was not the leader. She was the junior but she has made a choice that we catapult her onto an enduring leadership tomorrow. But because this woman was already distracted by herself, she became a distraction. And now, let's see, when she did all of that, and Mary could not be diverted. You see how she was going up and down. Suddenly. You know what she did now? She came. And faced who? Look at how. Look at. Imagine that I was preaching here. And I'm talking to you. And all of you are sitting here. Because if you are not reading your Bible very well. You will not know the evil. Of what Martha was doing. And yet she did not think it was wrong because she thought she was serving Jesus. 
What did she do? Why the meeting was going on? Why Jesus was making a very important point? What did she do? Lord! Did you not care? Now, you call somebody Lord. If you say Lord, look at the next thing she said. Somebody should read it. Don't you care? Don't you care? Excuse me. Is that an advice? Is that a request? What is it? It's a, a rebuke. Don't you care? Ah! That this girl has left me alone to serve? you talking about sir what are you preaching that is so important here that you don't care that this guest should come out how can she be sitting in the bible study when we are supposed to be organizing things do you know the problem many of you had in your campus many of you don't sit in bible study Eh? Talk to me serious. Let's talk. Do you know that when a meeting is going on, what are the ESCO people doing? They are walking up and down. Walking up and down. I don't know what is always making it to happen like that. They never finish organizing. I thought, even if you organize, 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 until the meeting starts, you go and do what? Take your seat! Uh -uh. Uh, please, uh, come, 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 come here. Come, here. come yes, yes. Uh, Timbe, what do you think? Uh, what, what, what do we think about what, uh, you know? You see? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Even while the word of God is going on, he is busy. Again, discussing and say, so how do we, you know, uh, you know, I kept wondering. I said, what is this man? And do you know that? He has not sat down to hear the word of God. Though. Doesn't know what God has said. He has not been affected. But he's still hoping to come and take the microphone when the preacher finishes to come and uh, round up. Have you been doing it? Confess to me. You never thought it was wrong. You are always thinking it was part of leadership. That is why your leadership does not carry weight. That's why the all about your leadership is about activities. And that is why even yourself, you are prone unto hypocrisy because when your inner man is dry, you can only be pretending that you are up there when you are finished. You know why I need to deal with this this morning? is because the trend in which many of you are growing is a trend that make it look like leadership is because you have known everything. So sometimes, even when the word of God is going on, instead of sitting down and taking your own note, do you know what you find yourself doing? You know? You are a supervisor. <laughs> supervisor. And the way you are behaving, as if everything that God is saying in that meeting, you already know it. Bad manners. That reduces your capacity 
for becoming something serious with God tomorrow. See, how she was not only distracted, she distracted everybody. Can you imagine why Jesus was, I don't know the point Jesus was making when this woman just broke it. Say, don't you care? If I put it in another language, you will know it's an abuse. He came to abuse Jesus. So. Kotie kanyi ko kanyi pe. You know that's what she's saying. So, so you always indulge people. And when she finished. There was no apology. There was no sense of I'm sorry to disturb. You know what she did? She gave a command to the Lord. Did you see the command? What was the command? Tell her! Therefore, tell her to come and join me now. What is it that makes it a leader? To become so presumptuous. Which I can see many of you have become. Many of us are becoming very presumptuous. Even when you, the way you want to approach the Lord, there's no more sense of worship, no sense of respect. You see what happens because you thought you are a leader, you just grab the microphone. Hallelujah! Yes, sir! Yes. And Father, we command you in the name of Jesus Christ, do something now. <laughs> All of that is making it appear as if you are bold. As if you are spiritual. And as if, yes, you have charisma. No. Is a distraction. You are being distracted. And that already places a limit to how far God can commit anything to your hand. That's why I'm talking about it this morning. And you know it's an attitude. Sometimes when you come for a meeting, The leaders, they think that yes, they are in charge. It never occurs to them that if you have a man who is coming with the word of God, who should be the first partaker of that meeting? It should be you sitting down first. Because if you caught it well, you will have helped others behind you. But something tells us, oh, well, yes. we invited the man, we invited the preacher. Yes, and we were the one who gave him the topic. You know, all of that makes you to have a sense of superiority. That if it is even superiority over the brethren, it's bad enough, oh, but at least it's okay. But that you have even a sense of superiority over the Lord. Over his word. Over the word of God. And sometimes, you know, as a leader, you cause distraction. What is it? You know, even, the, even you sit down there, you say, yes, 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 yes. That's what I've been telling you. <laughs> Whenever the man of God made a statement, you say, yeah, you see, as we said the other day. <laughs> as we said the other day, you know. He had just come to confirm everything I've been telling you. You are a distraction because you are distracted. But now, the Lord Jesus was going to address it. And it is Jesus' address that I thought we need to talk about. And Jesus said, Mata, Mata. Did you notice how he called her? Mata. 
You know, it's not as if Martha was afar off. And just said, Martha! Please come, I need to see. No, 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 no. Where was Martha? Where he was standing there to rebuke even the Lord. He said, Martha? Martha? Mata? Mata? Do you understand the meaning of that? How many times have I called you? And how many years do you have? Mata? Mata? Oh God. He said. You, you are what? You are careful and troubled about many things. You are troubled and careful and concerned about many things. And you know that is what, again, is the deception of a leader. A leader thinks it is correct that that is why I'm in leadership to care and to be troubled. Some of you already think that you are a leader simply so that you can be what? You can be overwhelmed to be overwhelmed with activities. Even if your own inner life has scattered, you still feel that it was right. For you to be what? To be careful about many things. And to be distracted about many things. Jesus said, Martha, you are careful about many things. Can someone read that from another version for me? You are so upset and obsessed about these many details. These details. You are obsessed and upset. But only one thing is what? Only one thing is needful. Not just that it is important. It is the only one thing that is what? That is needful. Only one thing is needful for your life to be correct. Only one thing is needful for your leadership to be effective. Only one thing is needful for you to be a man of serious impartation upon your people. Only one thing is needful for you to affect your generation. Just one thing. Not two, not three, not four. And you know, for me, when God confronted me with this, several years now, I was preparing to go and take a meeting. This was somewhere in Kogi State then. And I was just praying that I will go and lead the meeting. And that afternoon, when the Holy Spirit brought me and said, you are bothered about many things. You are bothered about traveling here, traveling here, traveling here, traveling here, traveling there, going up here, and all of that. But only one thing is needful. You know, when I, I, I came on this scripture, the first thing that happened, I threw it away first. I said, mm -mm, you come in it, you come in it. I have too much to do for God. Only for me to go back on that scripture. And I still see God pointing his finger. I said, only one thing is needful. You see, brothers, you don't know why. If, if, if there's something that I know can help your life and help you right early, I must tell you. 
If you are planning to become something in the hand of God and we know what can help your life right early, ah, I would not be correct not to tell you. When God confronts them, only one thing is needful. You know, the more I say it, the more I, I, I just feel like I've not said it enough for you to hear me. So I was saying, God, you mean that for me to reach the whole world as you have been speaking concerning me, only one thing is never we say yes. Ah. For me to affect my generation. And you know, when I'm traveling in those days, there's no road. Sometimes I will sleep by the roadside. And you know, I will be feeling that yes, I'm serving the Lord. Actually, and I was serving the Lord. Sometimes I'll just put uh, my Bible back by the roadside and I'll just say, Father, I bind all mosquitoes, I bind all scorpions, I bind all reptiles. Father, clear them, clear them, clear them. All this circumference where your servant is sleeping, I clear all reptiles in the name of Jesus. Then I will sleep by the roadside. <laughs> because I'm stranded. And when I wake up in the morning, I look for another vehicle to carry me. And I say, yes, I'm serving the Lord. Only for God to say yes. But only one thing is needful. I say, hey. If there's only one thing that is needful for me to fulfill the call of God on my life. He said, yes, only one thing. I almost could not go to preach that message they were asking me to preach again. Because I got, I just, I just cried. I said, God. And that it is something you, to, you are to choose. It will not be forced on you. Did you understand? It is a choice you have to make. Nobody can enforce it on you. Say, Mary has chosen that good portion. And no man will take it away from her. You are telling me to, 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 to move her away from the one thing that is needful. Matter. Matter? Matter? But you know what bothered me, which I don't have time to talk about, was how the chapter ended. Did you see that the chapter ended almost inconclusively? Eh? Who knows why? But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. And the chapter closed. And I was trying to find out whether chapter 11 continued. But you will see that. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place. What does that imply to you now? Which means this chapter 11 was in a different place entirely. Because they will not be saying in a certain place. If he was still there in the house of Mary and Martha Bethany. Am I right? So why did that chapter end inconclusively? Do you know what happened? Why Jesus was saying, Martha, Martha. He said, please, tell, 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 you know I need to go now quickly because something is on fire. I need just to move now. We will be discussing that later, please. How many of you have worked out on the Lord. Because you thought you just have to go and do something. The Lord is still speaking. Something that will change your life. But leadership activity makes you to feel it was right. To do what? To run off. Do you know that many things that God wants to say to your life. Have remained unfinished. Why? Oh, oh. Yes, I just need to go and start that meeting. I just need to go and start that program. Yes, 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 Jesus, yes. Brethren, and God is asking, who sent him? Who sent this boy now that is going up and down? What is he going to tell the people? Why is he so excited about running up and down like this? Matter did not catch it. One thing that is needful. Which may record. Praise the Lord. 
Do you know? Everywhere you go further, when Jesus goes, and they reported that he went to the house of Martha and Mary, you will still see the same repeated. Martha served. That's all that Martha was doing. She appeared to be a great mobilizer at the expense of the one thing that is needful. Now, permit me to say to you quickly, because I want God to help you to look for that one thing that is needful. That's what I want us to do this morning with you. Because if you catch it there, every other issue that God needs to sort out in your life will be sorted out. There, every other matter that the Holy Spirit needs to open for your life to be sharpened and for your ministry to become useful, it will be revealing to you there when you have chosen that one thing that is what? Needful. Can you imagine that? Because she did, she, you know, the matter is that it's a choice. It's a choice. If you don't choose it, it will not stick to you. Are you getting me? This one thing that is needful, it has to be my choice. If I don't choose it, I don't get it. And it does not happen to you by chance. It comes to you by choice. Are we together? How will it come to you? It's by choice. Mary has chosen it. So what was that one thing that Mary has chosen? Said, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Two things that are critical in that one thing that is needful. Mary also did what? Sat where? At Jesus' feet and heard his word. She sat At Jesus' feet. What does it mean to sit at the feet of Jesus? What does it mean to sit at the feet of Jesus? They spoke about Paul when he was saw. They said, who sat at Gamaliel's feet? When the apostles started, one of the things they said is that, and this, you know, they, they sat at the apostles' feet. That attitude of sitting at Jesus' feet is that no matter how high you are in leadership, you are perpetual learner. And the higher you want to go in leadership, the deeper a learner you must become. The more a learner at his feet you must be. The more you want God to expand your life and your influence and your ministry and your leadership the more a learner at his feet you must be what did jesus say he said take my yoke upon you and do what and learn of me learn at my feet for i am meek and lowly of heart and you will find rest for your soul my yoke is easy my body is what is light. 
who among you? Because I need to bring that to you. It's a one thing that is needful. It won't come to you if you did not choose it. Honestly speaking, leadership will deceive you that you won't have time for such a thing because you are already busy. And not only that, this matter that I'm talking about, as it is beginning to manifest even for you, you on the campus, you, you, you put a good meeting together, but you are outside the meeting. You help arrange everything together, but you are outside it. And even if you have a little time to come and sit, you are not sitting at the feet. You are sitting on the table. Your heart is not at the feet. Your heart is where? On top there. We are the organizers. We are the supervisors. We thank God. Yeah, the meeting is going well. Yes. So, when the Bible said, Mary has chosen this one thing. She sat at his feet and heard his word. I want to tell you that matter of being a perpetual learner at the feet of Jesus, at the feet of the master, is only a correct choice for you to become an effective leader in the hand of God. If you don't choose it, if you don't choose it, everything is working contrary to it. You are going to be too busy everywhere. They will be chasing you about. You won't have time. Because you are doing many things. You will only be concerned about where to preach, not where to sit down. Are you hearing me? Eh? Do you know how terrible it is in this generation? Especially among the charismatic Pentecostals. That you can't get a pastor to come and sit down in a meeting. Except you have invited him to come and do what? To preach. Have you noticed that? Eh? If you went to somebody, some of these pastors said, We have a meeting and we would like you to please come. Do you know what he's going to ask you the next? To do what? What do you want me to do? What's my slot? Am I telling you the, something that you do understand? Eh? Did you notice that they don't come for a meeting except they have something to, to preach? You can't just say, oh, there's this meeting that is going to bless you. We just want you to come and sit down and be blessed of the Lord for your life and ministry. You say, what? Who told you I'm not blessed? Who is telling you that I need to be learning like that? I'm a man of God. I'm a minister. If you are inviting us to minister, I'll be there. But you must tell me the time to come. So, even if they manage to come, you have to put them where? In the minister's uh, platform. And he has to say something. And the, the other problem that I see that God must deliver you from in your own generation is that they don't come for meeting to hear. They came to speak. So what do they do? They will enter when it is five minutes to their turn. And when they finish, they move right immediately and move with their convoy. That is bad manners. A distraction. It is not anointing that is doing that. It is foolishness. Are you hearing me? And you know some of you, you are already thinking that that is how to be a big man. And you want to practice that. You want to begin to act like that. Sometimes instead of coming when the prayer meeting, look at this brother now. He's leading us in prayer. 
Did you see that that prayer meeting is going on? And he is mobilizing. And people are praying. People are crying. People are crying to God. The minister. Who is going to bring the word of God? Where is he? Is at home? Or is somewhere drinking tea? And chatting with some sisters? Who are waiting on him? How can you be waiting on God and some people waiting on you? Did you see the trouble now? How will you be genuinely in the spirit crying to God and one girl is waiting and waiting to give you a handkerchief, waiting to give you a, a cup to drink and all of that. Did you see that something strange has come to distract where you are going? Do you understand? So this morning, she sat at his feet. Now, there are three ways in which to sit at his feet. You sit at his feet in your private, uninterrupted closet. Where you shut the door. <clears throat> Say, Jesus, I am here. Jesus, I am here. Savior, I am here. I am here for you. I have come alone. Just as I am without one plea. But that your blood was shed for me. And now thou bids me come to thee. O Lamb of God, I come. When you are alone, you have left the regalia of being president. You have left the regalia of being the general secretary. You are no more carrying the regalia of sister's coordinator. You just came now. As who? Dupe, dupe that you are. Say Dupe is here, not sister's coordinator. Are you hearing me? Can you go to your closet and throw away all the regalia of a leadership position and sit down as who? Not as a leader, but as who? As a learner. When you learn to sit at his feet. Honestly, and listen to me, this is the last, this is the, another distraction that I am praying that God will help you to deal with. Even sometime, when you are supposed to be sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning for your own life, you are again distracted about what to preach. Huh? So, instead of you, Hearing the word for your life. You are what? You are a prism. You know what we call a prism? A refracting medium. Instead of the word to sink, what do you do? You refract it to others. So right inside where you are supposed to be focusing on your life with God. You are again in the public, practicing how you will preach it. How you will tell those people. How you will show them that they are not serious. You are missing the point. One thing is what? It's needful. Mary has done what? Has made that choice. And it shall not be taken away from her. That's the first way in which to sit at his feet in your closet and I want to ask you now how many of you are having a functional personal unbroken progressive quiet time in a quiet place with a continuous note are you hearing me Eh? 
I'm not talking of, and you just come, you just take one sheet of paper and say, Yes, sir, yes, sir, Karababa. Yeah, 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 even in your closet, I say, yeah, 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 yeah. What's the meaning of that? Are you doing that to the Lord? That mannerism you used to demonstrate in front of your uh, fellowship member to prove that you're a superman. Are you still doing that before the Lord, your God? Why can't you fall on your face? Why can't you be at his feet? And say, Lord, I have come. Just as I am. Just as I am. One thing that is needful. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? Not to go and sermonize. But to sit down there at his feet. Where is Soti? Who, who, whose life? Whose life? It's your life that God wants to first sort out. It is because when he has made you, you can become a message for him. That's the first way. Sitting at his feet. In a private, in an undisturbed closet. I use the word closet because Jesus said, when you pray, do what? Go into your closet. Do what? Shut the door. Do you know why you need to shut the door? So that you can be real. Eh? So that you can be what? You can be real. You can be open. You can freely tell God how you are. You know the trouble is that if another brother came there or another sister where you are, you seem to be praying, immediately what happens? Eh? You are distracted, number one. Number two, you can't open up again. Oh, oh God! Oh, God! I'm still struggling! I'm still struggling! My eyes are still disturbing me with that sister. Eh? Then the other brother said, Bro, President, you mean you are also You disappoint me. We are following you. I didn't know that you are also struggling like this. Next time. When a brother like that is around or any other person. Even if you have a matter to confess to God. How do you do now? I stand as a father in the name of Jesus. Concerning the word that you are saying to your children. Lord just help them. Just help them. We just want you, Lord, that we do something that our brethren will just stand well and that this matter will not destroy your people in the name of Jesus. You become an intercessor. When you needed to be interceded for, go into your closet. Do what? Shut it up. So that those things that needed to be sorted out of your life, you are free to sort it out. Am I communicating with you? There are things you need to excrete from your life. Go to the closet. Shut it. When you no longer have private place to shut up, you have become, you know, a, a, a sophisticated hypocrite who knows how to manage rottenness. That's why it is becoming quite an embarrassment that you are already in leadership but the terrible sins that you are struggling with and nobody knows, nobody can help you because you never have a place to sit we must handle that this morning it has to be your choice nobody can impose it on you if you don't choose it now in what other way can we sit at Jesus feet that's the second way now. Do you know that when Jesus encountered Saul on the road to Damascus, do you remember? He came with a question. He said, who are you, Lord? And what will you have me to do? Do you remember the question? Now, 
the Lord answered the questions, but he answered in a very technical way. He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Eh? But now, as regards what I will have you do, go into the city ahead of you. Eh? When you get there, it shall be told you. Eh? Did you hear that? It shall be told you what you will do. I was wondering if Jesus could say, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. What makes it difficult for him to also immediately be telling him what he should do? It is because part of sitting at Jesus' feet is learning to sit at the feet of disciples that have followed the Lord. Did you hear me? Eh? Part of sitting at Jesus' feet is learning to go and sit at the feet of those who have learned to follow the Lord ahead of you. This is where it's a very cru crucial choice that you who plans to be a leader for God, you are also learning to sit at the feet of, of an Ananias. Do you know that when Paul was now affected and God sent Ananias, that brother Ananias, go and pray for him. The Bible said he began to gather and sat at the feet of Ananias. Is there anybody where you sit now where they teach you the word of God? Yesterday we spent time talking about discipleship. And you see, for you who is planning to be a leader, are you hearing me? The only way by which Jesus produced those who became leaders in the New Testament was by what? By discipleship. Say, follow me. Learn of me. Learn of me. I am not putting discipleship to you this morning as an option if you want to be a leader. It is one thing that is needful for your life. You know, some of you, you came from organization, from churches, where they tell you that you're already a man of God. And so you are coming in with that level of arrogance. Yeah, yeah, yes. What are they talking about? Raguli is preaching, so I can preach my own. Who told you? Who told you that we who have worked with God, eh? continuously almost 40 solid years are you hearing me what arrogance is coming on your head that is making you imagine that you know what they knew and it's not that we have been playing even if for nothing I have been having quiet time with God for this number of years. Constantly. If you came now and said, Sir, can I see the note of your quiet time in 1976? I'll just pull it out for you. What of the note of 1981? I'll just bring it out for you. What of the note of 2007? I'll just bring it out to you. What did God tell you? April 26, 2004. i just bring it out for you. Should God be wasting time on my own life? Am I asking you? And so if you came to the Lord two years ago, what is it that gives you an impression? That, ah, yeah, yeah, it's by the anointing. Which anointing? If it is by the anointing, I had that anointing myself. What spirit of arrogance is come upon you that makes you unteachable? So you see, one thing that is needful that Sister Martha missed is what? Sitting at the feet. Maybe she thought that I know Jesus. After all, Jesus has come to my house. 
and if they say who is the chief host of the lord jesus in this land who will stand up Martha is the hostess so she thinks that because of that familiarity she does not need to sit at his feet again like i see some of you is it because you spoke somewhere and people seem to fall on the, i use the word seem to they seem to fall under the anointing is that what has made you to feel as if something what what does that mean what does that mean how many of them are standing how many people have you your life affected and they are standing for years what are you boasting about if god is going to raise you for a long time this one thing is needful and you need to sit down with it are you getting me a mary who also sat at his feet and heard his word are we together eh? so under whose feet are you sitting to learn the lord and this must be your priority because it is disciples of today that becomes the apostles of tomorrow are you getting me if you don't make that choice nobody can force it on you if you think well yes you know i'm the president of my fellowship so i'm the president i'm the president and so what are you the first president eh? does it not occur to you that people like us who have been presidents for years And even now, we are still sitting at the feet of the inexhaustible Lord. There's no how you can dig into him and you'll have come to the end of it. It's bottomless. When will I finish this Bible? When will I finish this Bible? It is it's unfinishable. Every time I open, I say, God, I thought I have known this completely. He said, no. You keep digging. So if God is going to make you what he wants you to be, if this is what God wants you to do, you must make a choice. Under whose feet are you going to sit down and learn the word of God? It is not that you can't read your Bible. We have, that's the first provision. You must have a closet where you and God. But when, when he has said, I am Jesus, he now say, go, it shall be told you. It's part of it. It's the same person who is saying, go, it shall be told you. Go and sit down there. Go and sit down. When next we call a student congress, whether anywhere, you just know that you are the first to go and sit down. Because again, that is your own privilege. Am I right? Every other place they are pulling you up and down. Why don't you have a place where you just sit down and sit down to absorb, to learn, to receive so that where they are carrying you up and down, you are, you, there's something in you. Why wouldn't you make that choice? It's a choice. Brother, it's a choice. Sister, it's a choice. If you don't make that choice, it cannot fall on you by chance. All the brothers you see, they sat, they are sitting at the feet. Some not only that they have read books, they also come and sit down and say, I need to sit down and sit down. There's nothing big. There's nothing big that when you finish your degree, instead they room you up and down. Say, hey, hey, NYC is not yet ready. Why don't you come and sit down and say, I want to sit and prepare for my life. And what is wrong? Even when you finish NYC, you know there's no job, there's no admission. Why don't you come and sit down and say, excuse me, can I come to Boko? Can I come to Ibadan? And just sit down. Because I know God is planning something for my life. 
Can you be deliberate in making it a choice? It's a choice. If you don't choose it, nobody can force you on it. But if your eyes are open and you are sensing that, ah, there's a future and there's a hereafter and I'm, I'm going to be a voice for God more than where I am now. I'm going to lead thousands. I'm going to be declaring the oracles of the Lord to many, many thousands. How many of you believe that there are thousands and thousands that will wait on you in the future? How many of you know that? So why wouldn't you prepare for it? Why will you be floating about over 20 members? You will make a choice this morning. Will you make that choice? Eh? Yes. One thing that is needful. And he heard his word. You know, as I look at the life of Mary, that woman has never stopped speaking to me. Even two days ago, as I was reading my Bible again, I saw that Jesus came to their house. Martha is fusing up and down and serving Guru Guru like that. Lazarus sat on the table with him. And while Jesus was sitting at the table, I was saying, where is Mary? Where is Mary in this meeting? Only for me to discover that Mary was where? At his feet. She had brought the alabaster box. She said, what can I do to my Lord here? And she broke the box. And pour the perfume upon the Lord. And use her hair to wipe the feet. I said, huh, that's where I want to be. I said, God, I want to be permanently broken. Irreparably broken for God. So that the aroma of his life will be oozing out of me. And I will be at his feet. That's where I want to be. So you see, we can never preach the gospel anywhere without mentioning Mary. Because you say, this thing that she has done must be mentioned as a memorial unto her wherever the gospel is preached. Because she learned how to sit. She did one thing. And for years, nobody can forget it. Martha did how many things? Many things. Which of it can you remember? Talk to me. Which one of it can you point at? Nothing. Even the day they were to raise Lazarus. See how she was running up and down. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. She never knew how to sit down. When she went and accosted Jesus still on the road. Do you know what she said? Lord, if you have been here, my, my brother will not have died. I don't know why you are coming late. Jesus said, huh? your brother will live again. I know, I know. He will rise again in the resurrection of the dead. I know that one. We are talking about now. You say, I am the resurrection and the life. Even if he dies, he will rise again. I am the resurrection. Do you believe this? You see, Martha? Say, I believe that you are the son of the living God who is going to come to the world. I said, what is the meaning of this? She knows too much Bible that is irrelevant. But you see, if you read your Bible, when Mary came, what did she do? She fell at his feet. And said, Lord, if you have been here, my brother will not have died. And she wept. And the Bible said, when Jesus saw her weeping, what happened to Jesus also? She also wept. He wept. Mary's tears could make Jesus to shed tears. That's the influence we are talking about. Influence of a man who sees at this and say, Master, if you have been here, the master says, I understand. And from that point, Jesus said, Where have you laid him? Where have you laid him? Mata came and said, Excuse me, he has been thinking for the past four days. We told you you came late. You know, may leadership not make you to become rude to the Lord. May you understand that leadership is not a liberty to take the Lord's presence for granted. 
the way some of you have no sense of respect again for the presence of God. The way you walk on the pulpit as if you are, you are in charge actually. Will you ask God, Lord, please change this attitude. It is not boldness, it is rudeness. It is not wisdom, it is foolishness. And it is not any form of spirituality. It is actually carnality. You are going to pray with me right now. I just thought you must make that choice. Did I ask you to do something? Make that choice. That choice will give you everything else that God will have loved to give you. One thing that is needful. No time I will have been showing you all the people that made it their one choice. Paul said, only one thing I do that I may know him. David said, only one thing have I desire that I may come into your temple and do what? And learn of you. Sit down and hear your word. This is what made them great. I'm looking for those who will choose it. May God help you to make a choice. I say it can't happen to you by chance. If you don't choose it, even this morning, it can't be yours. Hearing me is good, but it's not enough. You must make it a choice. Lord, I want to choose this. I want to come into this. I want to come into this in the name of Jesus. Can we pray together? Can we pray together? Hallelujah. Talk to God for yourself and say, Lord, I'm hearing you. One thing that is needful. One thing that is needful. One thing that I cannot avoid. One thing that you said is needful. Don't let my leadership position distract my life. Don't allow these many, many, many activities. We have this program here. We have this meeting there. We have this meeting here. And sisters meeting. And the brothers meeting. And ESCO meeting. And this meeting. That one, that one. We have to cook here. We have to do that. Will you pray this morning? Deliver me from all of that distraction. I want to make a choice this morning. I want to choose that thing that is needful. One thing that is needful. One thing, oh God, that is needful. Mary chose it. I want to choose it. I want to choose it. I want to choose it. Mashiara bakunto roboskiba. Mato roboskambara mashandara. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way in this matter. Have your way in this matter. Have your way with me, Lord. Have your way with me, Lord. Thank you, Father. Now, let's conclude. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Let me tell you, even though you are a leader today, if you don't make this choice, you will soon be reshuffled backward. Mary sat down. She was not a leader. She was a junior, but she became the most prominent voice. If you don't make this choice, even this leadership position you are holding will become temporary. I want you to take that song with me. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou art. Draw me nearer, 
Nyara, 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 blessed Lord, blessed Lord, to, to thy precious bleed, bleed inside. Can you pray and say, every distraction of my life, everything that makes me restless, please, Lord, Put your finger on it and uproot it for me. Bring me to a place where I can actually, actually, actually sit down. I want to sit down. Lord, I want to sit down at your feet. I want to hear your word. I want myself to first of all be the first learner at your feet. Please help me this morning. Please help me this morning. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I'm going to leave you two, two choices this morning. Please listen. If this morning, despite all that has been happening, you still discover that you are distracted. Your leadership position has distracted you. When others are running to the altar, you say, but I'm the president. How can people, all the brothers I came with, how can they see that I went to the altar? That I, me, myself, I went for counseling. I used to counsel people. How can I go for counseling? You are distracted. And this is one of your last opportunity in this morning to make it right with God, to say, God, I don't know what I'm proud about. The area of my life that nobody is able to speak into, I must lay it at your feet. We want to pray about that. Secret things that you have not been able to dispense. You have not been able to become what God wants you to be. Will you this morning, in humility, speak to God and say, Lord, I want to face the reality of my inner man. I want to deal with this. I don't want to leave this meeting without your help. That's the first matter of prayer. And if you are doing that, I want you to just raise your right hand and say, God, don't let this leadership position distract me. Is it because I'm sister coordinator? That's why I can no longer sit down for my own life. Lord, help me this morning. I don't want to die a matter. Now, secondly, are you willing to say, Lord, this discipleship opportunity they are giving me to sit at the feet of men that you have helped and that are in different locations, different places where you are, where God can help you. And we need to pray about that together. If you are making it a choice, I choose to be properly discipled, to sit at the feet of those whom God has sat upon to help my life. You will also raise your right hand and say, God is my choice. Nobody needs to chase me up and down again. I choose. I want to go and sit where my life can be helped so that I can help people better. God bless you. God bless you. There are two issues we are raising. Some of you, you want to respond to the two at the same time. No problem. Do it. But when we are sorting things out, we will sort it out and we will pray for you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, this morning, you are pointing at one thing that is needful. One thing that will make our lives effective. We have heard you. We don't want to be a distraction to ourselves and to people. The attitude that we have seen in our general meetings and all of that has proved that we are making a wrong choice. But this morning, oh God, we are listening, we are hearing you. We want to make this choice. We want to walk into this reality in the name of Jesus. Lord, look at the hands that are lifted particularly this morning. 
both to deal with their closest life and the necessary discipleship that will prepare them for genuine and enduring leadership in the future. Lord, as they raise this hand, address their situation. Amen. Respond to their cry. Amen. Do something deliberate. That God, this meeting, as little as it is, this short instruction will have set them on the pedestal of, of proper growth and greatness in the name of Jesus Christ. Every arrogance, spiritual arrogance, we reject it because it's from the devil. The spirit of pride is the spirit of the devil. What do we already know that we are so high, high up this morning, Father, as you puncture that spirit, release the spirit of grace upon it said said learn of me look at jesus he said learn of me i am meek i am lowly of heart if jesus the son of the living god is of a lowly heart how can me what am i that my heart is high up there this morning father we are praying that as many as are taking this decision are making it a choice and because they are already in leadership, Lord, help us to focus on them. Amen. Turn your eyes upon them. Amen. Do something with them that will be eternal. Amen. That, Lord, none of them will drop by the wayside. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.